Hi guys, we are Tom and Mish from Lush Films and we are here today to give you this wax masterclass on gimbals and how to move. For this project, we have been using the Zion Crane S2 Pro Kit, this bad boy here. And we tested out a load of moves trying to find unconventional ways of using this gimbal to give you our top five favourite gimbal moves. So to get your camera onto the Zion Crane gimbal, it's really, really easy. First step is you need to get the riser plate onto the bottom of the camera and then the base plate attached to that riser plate, which will give you a bit of stability because it's got two screws in the bottom. Now within the head of the gimbal, there is actually a, a nice adapter that allows you to move the base plate outwards and gives you much more space against the edge motor of the gimbal here. So if you keep that loose there, undo that, keep it loose, and then slide your camera into the base plate. And then you can move it back in position if you need to and make sure you close that latch to lock it off. So the first thing you want to balance is the tilt axis on the gimbal. So make sure you undo this gold one next to the side motor here. And what you're looking for is a decent balance of it not rolling around. So to do this, you can undo this this latch at the side of the base plate to move it backwards and forwards in the base plate to make sure that is balanced. So just move it around until it feels like it's not going to move anywhere. Lock that one off. Then turn the camera backwards and what you're looking for is for the camera to stay perfectly still in any direction you move it. So at the moment it looks like it's tilting a bit too far backwards. So underneath here there is another latch that you can undo and then you can move it up and down on this one to get that balance as well. Once that feels like it's balanced, if we lock it off, and then you should be able to put it in any position. <laughs> Once that one's balanced, you should be able to hold it in any position and it should stay in that position completely still and that's the tilt axis balanced. The next axis to balance is the roll axis. So for this one there is one of the gold latches at the back. Unlock that, unlock that one and you can see if it's off balance. At the moment it's very off balance so what we need to do is just undo the back lock and then slide it in and out until it feels like it's balanced in that axis. So do the latch up at the top and then lock it off again. So the last axis to balance is the roll axis and to do that we're going to undo the last lock here and then what we're going to do is pick up the gimbal and tilt it slightly to the side to see if it rolls. At the moment it's twisting a little bit which means it's a bit back heavy. So in order to push the whole thing forwards there's a clasp on this side, if you undo it, you can push the whole system slightly forward and then very gently do it up and then check that again. That seems pretty much there. So once you're happy with that axis, make sure all of your axes are locked and then you know your gimbal is perfectly balanced. So the Zion Pro Kit comes with these amazing accessories. So firstly you've got the dual grip handle. It's carbon fibre so it's super, super lightweight, it's wicked. And then you've got the transmission system which has been basically a game changer for us. So this transmission from the app gives you free control over both the camera and the gimbal. So you're not physically attached to the gimbal and you can, you can actually use a second operator directing the shot from a distance and also controlling that, your camera and the gimbal if needed. So the Zion follow focus motor is literally the best one we've ever used. It's so on point, it's wicked. There was literally just enough room to pop on uh, the follow focus onto our 24mm uh, lens but it works brilliantly. We've been really impressed with it. And lastly, the dual cam extension module. 
This would allow you to mount a second camera on top of the first one, but with a different lens. So for, the, for instance, you could use it having different camera settings or if you were going from inside to outside. So we didn't actually use the extension module on this occasion, but what a great idea and what a great design it is. And you know, it's, it'll really help you to streamline your filmmaking process and to be more time efficient on your shoot. Now this gimbal comes with removable batteries which are based in the handle. And this is a really, really great feature because it means you can have a spare set of batteries already charged with you on set and it means you'll never run out of batteries and power with the gimbal on location. So the first shot we wanted to try out with this gimbal was a really simple, just moving forwards and backwards shot using our subject sat on a bench. And this was the first time me should actually use the gimbal. So we wanted to start with something a little bit easier to get her, let her get used to it. Now I've never really been a massive advocate of the old uh, gimbal, but kind of fell in love with this little boy actually. It was, it, was, it was really good fun. So for this shot, we put the Sony a7S III with a 24 mm Samyang lens on the kit. So we've got a nice big wide angle shot of our subject. And the movement is very simply just walking forwards very slowly, very steadily to crop in on that subject. So another really good tip when using a gimbal is to use what's called the ninja walk. And the ninja walk, simply put, is just trying to bend your knees while you're walking forwards and backwards so your knees can eliminate some of that bounce you have when you're walking. Shot number two is the subject tracking tilt. The shot starts directly above the subject, the camera then moves down and the camera also tilts up to reveal the face of the subject looking straight down the lens. To get the camera right above the subject on a nice wide shot, we use this which is the Manfrotto Gimboom, which allows you to attach a long pole to the bottom of the gimbal and then you can get that height by standing back and holding the gimbal at length. To get this shot, we use the image transmission system sending the image to a phone and then we use the ZY Play app to see the shot. To be able to keep the subject's head in the middle of the frame, we use the subject tracking feature. Once we had that locked in, we could then raise the gimbal up above the subject. Mish could stand back and look at the shot while I was trying to perform the move. And all I had to do was bring the camera slowly, steadily down in front of the subject and then push in to her face. And it looks great, doesn't it? It looks so really nice, a really nice tilting shot which mimics a crane shot you can get from bigger big pieces of kit. Having two people to achieve this shot is much quicker and much simpler. So the next shot is the vertical subject orbit. Now this shot is a quite difficult shot to achieve because you have to swing the camera entirely around the subject in a vertical motion. So it takes a bit of getting used to, but it's a really nice shot when you get it right. To get this shot, we put the gimbal in the POV function, which keeps the camera facing forwards. Then it's just a case of me standing back and taking the image transmission screen so she can see what I'm filming, and me having a practice swinging around the box's hands to get that kind of vertical swinging shot. It's quite difficult, but when it's done well, it looks wicked. It did take a few goes, and it <laughs> took a lot of practice trying to get this shot. So we tried it a load of times and just picked the one that we felt looked the best. So the next shot is the horizontal subject orbit. Now, this is basically just like the vertical subject orbit, 
but obviously you're just walking round, keeping at the same distance from your subject using your ninja walk. So there's two ways you can achieve this shot. If you wanted to, you could put on the subject tracking feature to make sure that subject is locked in the middle of the frame. But the way we did this, we were walking behind punching bags and we were scared that if we did that, it might kind of try and knock the tracking off and it would lose the subject in the center of the frame. So we opted to use the manual focus on this occasion and just make sure that we kept that distance from the subject. And then what we did after that was we switched the lens from a 24 mil to a 90 mil, which is a bigger lens, a heavier lens, so it took us to rebalance the gimbal. But then we got a much tighter shot of the subject's feet, just as the rope was skipping underneath the feet to give us something to edit to from that wide angle shot. So the next shot is the mirroring movement. We used a rope in the middle of the boxing ring and we ducked under the rope and used the subject to punch at the camera as we ducked under with her. Um, which I thought was really quite effective. So the trick to this movement is just following the movement of the subject as you duck under the rope and move backwards at the same time. If you tried to do this without a gimbal using just a handheld camera, it would be really hard. You'd get a lot of camera shake and a lot of movement around there. But doing it with a gimbal gives you that perfectly smooth movement under the rope and back up again. And the gimbal absorbs all those movements and all that kind of weight and moving around perfectly. The next shot is the barrel roll, and this uses the vortex function on the gimbal. So the vortex function will spin the camera vertically using the joystick function, pressing left or right to spin whichever way you want to. We wanted to find a way of using a subject that could also spin, and we could keep that up subject in the middle of the frame while the background spins around the subject. So for the first attempt at this shot, we wanted to use one of the boxes doing a sit-up sequence and then rolling backwards, doing a backwards roly-poly, which we could then mimic with the camera and try and match the speed of that backwards roll. Now, for a number of reasons, this was very difficult. So we tried it several times. I even went the wrong way once, and we tried to get the boxer moving, but we couldn't quite match that movement, and it was a really difficult thing to achieve given how much time we had. So the next move that we tried was just a simple walking, uh, the boxer walking through into the um, club. Oh. And um, yeah, it looks rubbish basically. <laughs> I didn't think it looked very good at all. We wanted to achieve a shot where we had the subject moving down a corridor and you spin around the corridor and you feel that kind of motion which would be a really unconventional way of entering the space. The problem was that once we'd done it, we, the shot itself works quite nicely, but as part of a sequence, it's a really strange and disorientating shot to have at the start of a, a sequence of Well, boxing. it just looks really cheesy. <laughs> well, I like, I like the shape of the movement, I just didn't think it works to be the opening shot of the film because it's too strange and it doesn't really help set the scene of where you are. Yeah. So we then thought about trying to keep the camera steady and use that vortex spin looking up at a subject which could then spin around. I mean, it's all about, you know, using the space that you're in and finding really unconventional ways to create movement and, and use all of the amazing uh, functions of this gimbal or the gimbal that you're using to create something that, you know, will wow your viewers. So we found a hanging punch bag which had a perfect circle above it. We placed the gimbal directly underneath that punch bag and then used the vortex function to make it spin. Simple, but I think looks pretty good. So those are our favourite gimbal moves from this sequence we did in the boxing club. It's nice to really try and find a way of using a gimbal to give you some unconventional views and ways of looking at a subject that can be different to standard kind of handheld camera work. I mean we chose a boxing club because you know you're going to get movement, you're going to get uh, good subjects doing, well punching each other. <laughs> it's got me, God, it's pretty good isn't it? So after we'd done that sequence, the last thing we had to do was to get these guys in the ring having a spa and seeing how we could move around them and find different ways of viewing and looking at them with the cameras and the gimbal. We tried it with a 24mm lens, we also tried it with a 35mm Samyang lens, and we also tried it with a 90mm Sony G Master lens. All of these different lenses give you a very, very different view of the subject in the ring, but you're very limited to how far away you can be because you're just outside the ropes. So one way we tried to think of editing this sequence is by using a camera blocking transition. 
So in order to achieve this visual transition, what we did was place a coat on a uh, light stand at one corner of the ring, moved past that coat to use the coat to black out the camera lens on the screen. Then we swapped sides of the ring, set up the same light stand with a coat hanging on it, moved in the same direction as we started the shot in, but emerging out from behind the coat. And therefore you can cut in the middle of that movement and then you've got a transition that swaps sides of the ring. Quite simple, quite effective, and it really helps your editing process because you know exactly which bit you need to use. So there you have it, there's our favourite gimbal moves using the Zion Crane 2S Pro Kit. Lovely, beautiful piece of kit. I have to say, one of the nicest pieces of kit that we've used recently actually, isn't it? The thing about this gimbal is it, it just feels so much more sturdy than most of the other gimbals we've used. The locking systems are really steady so you can literally swing it around once you've locked them all off. And the smooth motion you get from the actual gimbal itself, the motors work beautifully well and it gives you such good results. So we hope you've enjoyed this WEX masterclass on gimbals and how to move. Thank you very much and we'll see you on the next one. Over and out you guys. <laughs>